Hello students, welcome to Chapter 1, Lecture 3. This lecture will cover the variance of normal as well as benign conditions of unknown cause. Some variance of normal we have already discussed earlier in this chapter. They include four dice granules, torus palatinus, mandibular tori, melanin pigmentation, retrocuspid papilla, lingual varicosities, linea alba, and leukoedema. We will review the ones that we have already gone over very briefly and go into more detail on the new variants of normal. Four dice granules are clusters of ectopic sebaceous glands. That means ectopic means that they are not in the location that they are expected to be found. They are usually found around hair follicles. We do not expect to find hair follicles in the buccal mucosa. Therefore, they are ectopic. They appear as yellow lobules in clusters and are commonly observed on the vermilion border of the lips and the buccal mucosa. No treatment is necessary. A torus palatinus. Torus is the singular form, tori is the plural. A torus palatinus is an outward growing normal compact bone. It is observed clinically in the midline of the hard palate. It is inherited and forms gradually. It occurs more commonly in women than in men. It may take on various shapes and sizes, may be lobulated, and is covered by normal soft tissue. No treatment is necessary unless they interfere with speech, swallowing, or a prosthetic appliance, such as a denture. This is the radiographic appearance of a lobulated torus palatinus. You can observe it on the picture on the right, and you can also see the lobulated appearance on the radiograph to the left. Mandibular tori are overgrowths of dense bone that are found on the lingual aspect of the mandible in the area of the premolars above the mylohyoid line, or ridge. They are usually bilateral and therefore are plural, tori, rather than torus, but are sometimes unilateral, in which case it would be a torus. They are often lobulated or nodular. They can appear fused together. They have no predilection for either sex. The photograph on the right shows extremely large mandibular tori, which are practically growing together from one side to the other and are blocking the tongue. This is unusually large. Most tori are much smaller than this. The radiographic appearance of these tori is seen on the radiograph on the lower left. As I said before, these are extremely large tori and therefore will likely be needed to be removed if the patient needs a prosthetic appliance. Melanin pigmentation is the pigment that gives color to skin, eyes, hair, mucosa, and gingiva most commonly observed in dark-skinned individuals. As you can see in the photographs, on the left they could look purplish, or on the right it could have a brown appearance. The retrocuspid papilla, or papillae, if there are more than one, as there are in this picture, are pointed to by the black arrows, and they appear as sessile nodules on the gingival margin of the lingual aspect of the mandibular cuspids. Lingual varicosities. 
Their clinical appearance is red to purple and they are enlarged vessels or clusters. They are usually observed on the ventral and lateral surfaces of the tongue and most commonly observed in individuals older than 60 years of age. Linea alba literally means line white. It is a white line that extends anteroposteriorly on the buccal mucosa along the occlusal plane. It may be unilateral, bilateral, or confined to the posterior or anterior portion of the mouth. It may be more prominent in patients who have a clenching or bruxing habit. Should you see a linea alba on a patient, or what appears to be a linea alba, you want to take the cheek and stretch it slightly and see if the line disappears. If it disappears, it is usually something else or an early linea alba. Leukoedema is a generalized opalescence on the buccal mucosa. It is most commonly observed in black adults, but can also be seen in Asians. If the mucosa is stretched, the opalescence becomes less prominent. No treatment is necessary. Benign conditions of unknown cause include lingual thyroid nodule, median rhomboid glossitis, geographic tongue, fissured tongue, and hairy tongue. A lingual thyroid nodule is the undescended trapped remnants of thyroid tissue. Clinically, they appear as a mass in the midline of the dorsal surface of the tongue, posterior to the circumvallic papillae in the area of the foramen cecum. It usually has a sessile base and is two to three centimeters in width. Its predilection is for females and is linked to hormonal changes. Treatment includes evaluation of the patient to determine whether the thyroid gland is present in its normal location. Median rhomboid glossitis is a flat or slightly raised oval or rectangular erythematous area in the center of the tongue. It may be associated with a chronic infection with Candida albicans, which is a fungus. No treatment is usually necessary, but antifungal treatment may be used. If it is due to Candida, the patient should be advised to eat yogurt and take acidophilus to replenish the friendly bacteria in the intestinal tract. The picture on the right shows the rhomboid glossitis beginning at the junction of the anterior and middle third of the tongues and extending posterior to the circumvallate papillae. Geographic tongue, also known as benign migratory glossitis, appears as erythematous patches surrounded by a white or yellow border. There are diffuse areas that are devoid of filiform papillae. There is a distinct presence of fungiform papillae. There appear to be remission and changes in the depapillated areas. It is believed that genetic factors may play a role in the presence of geographic tongue. It may be exacerbated by stress. Occasionally, the patient may complain of a burning discomfort. Patients have also reported that it could be brought on by certain foods to which they may be sensitive. Common foods named are tomato sauce, pineapples, and other acid type of fruit. No treatment is usually indicated. Ectopic geographic tongue is a term used to describe geographic tongue which is found on mucosal surfaces other than the tongue. The picture on the right shows an ectopic geographic tongue seen in the mandibular anterior mucobuccal fold. 
In fissured tongue, the dorsal surface of the tongue appears to have deep fissures or grooves. The cause is apparently unknown. However, some sources say that it is related to a vitamin B deficiency. It probably also involves genetic factors and is seen in about 5% of the population. For patients with fissured tongue, home care is directed to brushing the tongue gently with a toothbrush to remove debris that may become embedded in the grooves. No treatment is generally necessary. The clinical appearance of white hairy tongue is elongated filiform papillae that are white. They are the result of either an increase in keratin production, a decrease in normal desquamation, and is generally found to be related to an overgrowth of candida albicans. For home care, direct the patient to brush the tongue gently with a toothbrush to remove debris. Also advise the patient to eat plenty of yogurt or take acidophilus. This condition is extremely common in the population and you will generally find some relationship with inappropriate use of antibiotics. Black hairy tongue is yellowish to brown to black because of chromogenic bacteria. Contributing factors are antibiotics, tobacco, certain foods, hydrogen peroxide, alcohol, chemical rinses. For home care, direct the patient to brush the tongue gently with a toothbrush to remove debris and also, again, eat yogurt. Your instructor will now assign groups to get together and discuss various questions such as what is the difference between a macule and a papule? What are the elements of the diagnostic process? What variants of normal may be found within the oral cavity? Each group leader will then give a presentation to the rest of the class. This concludes Chapter 1, Lecture 3.